Today on this edition of Life After Sight Loss TV, I've got a review of the Apple Watch Series 3 for blind and visually impaired people. What's up VIPs? Derek here, back with another edition of Life After Sight Loss TV, where it's all about helping you discover life after sight loss. On this channel, we do product reviews, life advice, encouragement, how-tos, and so much more. So if that sounds good to you, then consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss another single video. A couple of months ago, Apple announced a bunch of new products like the iPhone 10, iPhone 8, and the Apple Watch Series 3. Now, I've been an Apple Watch user since it first came out, and I had the Series Zero, which was the first generation Apple Watch. I really like the product. I've done videos on my channel before about the Apple Watch. And today, I wanted to talk about the Series 3 and why I picked it up and why you might want to consider it as well. Now, just as a brief overview, what is different about the Series 3 than others? Well, the big feature of the Series 3 is that you can get a model that's available with LTE, which means you don't have to be linked up to your phone to get phone calls, text messages, and so forth. Now, there are limitations to that, and you can check out all those specs if you're interested. But for me, I picked up the GPS-only version. I have the silver with the fog band. It's gray. Anyway, with the light gray band, and it is the GPS only. The reason I did that for a couple of things. One, I'm probably never going to be without my phone. And two, it was cheaper. So, you know, dollars talk. Now, just for a second, let's talk about the Apple Watch from a blind, visually impaired standpoint. It's got voiceover built in, Zoom built in, just like the iPhones and iPads. Now, I don't know if you use Zoom on this that much. I use voiceover constantly, uh, you know, so it's great. Of course, it has Siri, and it's got just a lot of great features that you can use. Is it a necessity? No, by, no, not at all. It's an accessory for sure, but it's a very helpful one if you use it. So let's just talk about how I use it and why I picked up the Series 3 and didn't just stick with my Series 0. Now, if you've used the original Apple Watch, the Series 0, you've probably noticed that it's been a bit laggy, especially since the release of Watch OS 4, which came out a couple of months ago, which at the time of this recording was uh, September of 2017. And so using the Apple Watch was still doable, but gosh, I had to double tap a lot of things, you know, multiple times. I had to wait. It was just very laggy. And I thought, you know what? Maybe it's a good time to go up to the Series 3 because last year, the Series 1 and 2, I just didn't feel like it was that big of a jump. And so I, I waited. So this year, I thought I'm going to go for the Series 3. So let me just tell you a couple of things about the Series 3 that I think will really, really help you make a decision if you're thinking about getting an Apple Watch. So first of all, it's so much faster. I mean, like lightning comparatively to my Series Zero. For example, doing a workout, um, you know, it's one of those things where I would tell Siri like, hey, you know, start this thing and it would start it. And with the Series Zero, it would do it, but it was laggy. It would, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'm thinking about it. And Siri went and got a cup of coffee and came back and then did it. Now with the Series 3, it's like, boom, it just goes and it's lightning fast. So, so much faster. You know, when they say in keynotes, they're like, it's 70% faster. It's two thirds faster. It's the, this is really, really faster. Now, I don't know about comparing it to the Series 2 or 1, but I know for the Series 0, it's like phew, lightning fast. So if you're looking for a faster processor, this is the watch to get. Now, what does that faster processor really mean in real world examples? Well, it's very responsive, first of all. So if I bring my watch up and I touch it, 1.38 p.m. It starts talking immediately. Before, with my Series 0, I'd touch it, wait about three seconds, and then it would talk. So it's very, very responsive. Also, um, things like Siri work much faster. And now with that faster processor, Siri will actually speak to you on the Apple Watch. Now, it's important to know that if you're running voiceover, it actually uses the voiceover voice, which is, I think, Samantha, as we would call it, it uses that voice instead of the Siri voice. Is it a big deal? No, it's just something to realize. For example, I was asking about when a football team was playing earlier, and Siri read it out very simply, like, they play on Sunday at 1 p.m. or whatever. But the voiceover voice actually read what was kind of all part of it. It would say, like, here's, you know, venue, da-da-da, time, da-da-da. So it's good, and it's, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just what you prefer. So if you want a quick answer from Siri then having voiceover on is going to sort of change that. It's important to note. Not a huge deal breaker by anything, but it is important to note. Another great feature of the Series 3 is battery life. I've yet to kill this thing. It could probably last me three days 
if I were, you know, just using it normally. Uh, I don't like to go out and have 30% of my battery left, so I usually top it off at night. But I can go, I've gone three days without charging it, and it's been fine. So the battery life is like, it destroys my Series 0, and probably does much better than the Series 1 or 2. So battery life is something to really consider when you're purchasing an electronic device. Apple Watch Series 3 nails it when it comes to battery life. Now again, this review is for blind and visually impaired people. So, as a blind and visually impaired person, should you get an Apple Watch? Well, here's the thing. You should get whatever you think is going to be helpful to you, and obviously your budget point, you know, things like that. But would I recommend the Apple Watch to people that are blind and visually impaired? Absolutely. It's a great device. It's very accessible, just like using your iPhone in a lot of ways. Plus, you've got instant access to messages and information and notifications, uh, which I really enjoy because if I'm in the kitchen doing something, I can just, you know, get to it real fast or whatever the case may be. Plus, here's the big thing about the Apple Watch. Workout, fitness, exercise, that's the really high key selling point of the Apple Watch, right? I mean, that's why uh, one of the reasons people buy it. And if you're visually impaired and trying to, you know, watch your weight, do some exercise, whatever, the Apple Watch is so beneficial. I can just tell Siri to start an indoor walk workout for a mile or whatever and then hop on the treadmill and it's going, it's calculating it. And I can keep track of all those things on the watch. I can start and stop workouts. I can, you know, just all those things. Plus the Series 3 is waterproof up to, I don't know, X amount of meters. I think it's like 50 feet, something like that. You can swim with it, basically. So if you want to go swimming, your Apple Watch will be there for you and you can, you know, hold on to it. You don't have to dump it, you know, in the bag so it doesn't get, you know, totally drowned in water. It's it's a really great feature for that, especially if you're blind and visually impaired. You can even check your activity in the app. You can check it on the phone or in the apps for a little more detail. It's, it's a really, really great feature when it comes to exercise, working out, all that stuff. It's it's really great. So I would definitely recommend the Apple Watch if you're thinking about it. But here's the thing. Remember, these are just tools to use. Do you need an Apple Watch? Absolutely not. Definitely not. If you're like, I can't afford an Apple Watch, that's stupid. It might be stupid. And I initially thought it was, I was like, it's an accessory. It's like a $350 accessory. Are you kidding me? I'm not buying that thing. And then I broke down and I bought one. Uh, working out has been so, it's been so helpful when it comes to that. I'm obviously not perfect, but you know, it's so helpful. And just those quick notifications and just tracking different things, it's so helpful. So here's the thing about the Apple Watch. If you're looking to pick one up, you can probably get a Series 1 much cheaper now. And they don't sell the Series 2 brand new anymore, from what I understand, but you can probably get a used one. Very good deal. It's probably not, you know, that all banged up or whatever. Go to eBay, you know, something like that. You can probably get one pretty good. And if you're looking to go brand new, getting the Series 3, ask yourself, are you going to be without your phone ever? Is that important to you? Because if it's not, Get the GPS only, save yourself about uh, 70 bucks or something, and just get the GPS only. It's the same watch, it has all the same features minus the LTE. So if you're interested in that, make sure you do some shopping and figure that out. So if you wanna get an Apple Watch, shop around, find what you want, and I say go for it. If you're, real, if you're on the fence, let me shove you over the fence. I say go for it, it's a great product. Now maybe you're watching this and you're like, oh, I just have a you know, few questions I wanna hear from you. I've done some videos on the Apple Watch before where I showcased a few things, and maybe you wanna see a demo of certain things. Hey, could you do this, could you do that? Leave them in the comments, and I'll make another video where I demonstrate some of the things that commenters want to see, because that way you can get a feel for how it's going to work and if it's really something that you'd be interested in. So leave all your questions, your thoughts, your demonstration examples down in the comments below, and I'll do my best to help you out and make another video here in the near future about all the fancy Apple Watch experiences. So my question for you today is this, are you thinking about an Apple Watch? And if not, what other wearables would you consider and why? I'd love to hear about it and I know others would as well. So let me know in the comments below. If you liked today's video, if you found it helpful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up Share it with somebody you know and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another single video. Thanks for watching this edition of Life After Sight Loss TV. And until next time, remember, sight loss isn't the end. It's just the beginning. My name is Derek Daniel from lifeaftersightloss.com, and I'll see you in the next one.